This talk is going to be historical change mapping using OSM as a platform. That's a bit of a mouthful. I'm going to be talking about <clears throat> special economic zones. And I'm going to be talking about OSM and uh, stuff that we've been, cool stuff that we've been doing at. Hello? Is that better? OK, so do I repeat from the start? OK. So we're going to be talking about uh, OSM as a platform, which is some of the cool stuff that we've been working at Development Seed um, on uh, OSM ecosystems. We've been doing this for a bit, so I think we've got a good workflow now. And the use case is historical change mapping. I want to start with a simple prompt. How can we make editing OSM? as simple as Google Docs, but also think of how Google Docs are really uh, quick documents that you could uh, collaborate on. You're not worried about creating or deleting too many of them. Uh, they're ephemeral, and they scale for lots of users. So thinking of not Google Docs, but OSM as documents, starting up OSM instances, collaborating on them, and then snapshotting, saving them, and maybe starting another OSM instance. Uh, how many people here consider themselves technical or from a technical background? OK, cool. Um, so I'm going to be introducing OSM Seed. Yay! I'm coming for you. OSM Seed is the latest in uh, DevSeed's work for particular use cases of OSM and the OSM ecosystem. And thinking of this, hey, let's start up OSM instances uh, that are pretty, uh, pretty light. The use case we had was mapping historical change in special economic zones. So special economic zones are these uh, areas that uh, have increased investment or special rules, economic rules, and we need to track them over time. So this is, for example, the World Bank would want to track them over time to see if their investments worked in these economic zones. So we have hundreds of these zones. We want to map them through different years. And you can start thinking about Oh, how do we add this type of map in OpenStreetMap? The type of monitoring that we want to do is, for example, here are, you know, at, at Development Seed, we looked at land use. We saw that there's a decrease in land use, in, uh, sorry, in farmland. And we'd like to map that out for two different years. Here we have two different years of buildup. Uh, of you know buildings that we detected, and so corresponding to those investments, we'd like to see uh, did they really pay out? And so we need to analyze change over time. And we can't use OSM for this because we can't put everything in the metadata. Uh, OSM is about mapping what you see. And there are efforts like Open Historical Map, but the current OpenStreetMap doesn't have uh, editor support for history or going, uh, just showing certain parts of history. But we also really want to use OSM. OSM's really cool. We're all here and we love OSM. Uh, it has uh, a nice data schema. Uh, JOSM. Who's a JASM user? JASM is pretty cool. Yeah, there's, OK, there's one person. <laughs> Fine, two. Uh, at DevSeed, we also have an expert data team, and they map using tools that are really, really fast. Uh, well, they map really fast using these, these plugins and tools into OpenStreetMap, so we want to leverage the OSM ecosystem as much as possible. And there are other tools in the ecosystem, like the tasking manager. So mapping out all these zones, we want to use 
everything that people have built for OSM to uh, sp speed up this type of mapping. So OSS, OS, OSM seed is something that we built for that. It allows us to spin the entire ecosystem up really, really quickly. Now, we're not at the speed of opening up a Google Doc, but we're at 15 minutes and we can spin up all the tools. And we aim to make this even easier to use. Now it's a bunch of command line scripts, so technical users might be a bit uh, more comfortable with this. But we want to make this as simple as possible, where we can spin up OSM, we map collaboratively, we have the entire API so that anyone can hook up to the endpoint online, map, save a snapshot for, in the case of uh, ec economic zones, saving a snapshot for that year, and then starting up a new blank OSM seed, mapping that year, and repeating. And once we can do that, we have snapshots of o OSM. So here, for example, this is using JOSM with OSM seed. And uh, I really like this graphic. It's cool. I can't point to the different places, but if you see different layers of OSM seed that are loaded up into JOSM, you can see buildings over time. We can analyze change. We can uh, take that change and correlate it with investments. It's a shared data set. It's exactly how OSM, the OSM model works. It's a collaborative document. And it's the same DNA as OSM. So any tool change in, in the OSM ecosystem we can bring in. It's, uh, so anything that's upstream in the OSM, uh, in the OSM API, we can bring in automatically in OSM seed. Now, there are a lot of similar approaches. So, POSM that Dale is working on, I, I guess, I don't know if he's still working on it, but POSM is a great approach that the Red Cross has used for offline disaster mapping and is, uh, and we, uh, took a lot from the POSM, we took a lot from the POSM project, we packaged it up in a different way and started putting it up online. So POSM is portable open street map, OSM seed takes a lot of those Docker files that POSM created and then packages them in a different way. I mentioned open historical map, that is another project, but its, <clears throat> its purpose is to store historical objects and doesn't work for the lightweight use case that we're trying to advocate here. And you could also uh, name other editors like, uh, I guess, QGIS or uh, saving files with, uh, with JOSM or, uh, or ArcGIS, I don't know. But it doesn't have that collaborative um, uh, it, those don't have collaborative features and you end up having a lot of uh, files. Here's the architecture. This is where if, if you don't understand what I'm saying this point on, please stop me. This is more deep in the guts here. Uh, Kubernetes is a system by Google that allows us to spin up machines, package them using Docker and web magic and allows us to create something that we can just turn on or off. And our current architecture for OSM seed has the OSM API and the database. It has replication, so you can look at your, uh, your edits over time and replicate them to other databases. There's the snapshotter tool that I was talking about for different years. And in the pipeline, we're thinking of uh, adding the tasking manager as well, and Tegola, which is a vector tile rendering pipeline. So traditionally, the OSM architecture has a raster pipeline. We're just going to skip that and go straight ahead to a vector rendering pipeline. And then once we have this architecture, we can interact with most other tooling. So like JOSM, import, export tools, 
This is how Kubernetes looks when you spin it up. The, I don't know, this graph makes me super excited, but I don't, I don't see a lot of excitement in the room. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> here you can see your CPU and your memory allocation. You can see how your processes are handling, and you don't have a lot of late night debugging to do. Logs, all in one place, <laughs> that's great. And uh, just to show you like the ecosystem interaction, um, I can't zoom in, but all you have to do is we just spit out an API endpoint and you just plug that into JOSM and you have user management, you have collaboration, you have everything that you could do is just one URL. This is our experimental Tegla support. Yeah, really cool, I know. Okay, so to go back, collaborative, uh, a co collaborative tool, collaborative document, we want to start a blank OSM. It's quick to create, delete, save it as a snapshot, and it's ephemeral. We don't really want to have this as a clone of OSM. Just think of it as an instance of OSM to do your work better. Now, we had a particular use case. We had the historical mapping use case. And to recap, that was we wanted to store snapshots of OSM in 2012, in 2018, in 2009, and analyze change across those years. But People have been using OSM Seed in the wild for a lot of other uh, cool tech. So uh, Visualizing Palestine is, has all these uh, paper maps that they'd like to digitize, and that's not going to touch OpenStreetMap. So they're doing paper map digitization and storing it in their own open OSM Seed. We've worked with people in the past at at development seed where they had private data attached to their uh, their road network, like budgeting and planning uh, metadata. That's not going into OSM, so they're using OSM seed for this type of work. And if you think about these quick documents that you can start up and, and just destroy, you can just have OSM sandboxes, OSM as playground. I think Teach OSM is a perfect example of this. We can have training in a uh, isolated place, uh, get new mappers familiar with the tools, and then just destroy that ecosystem as quick as we created it. I'm sure you can come up with other use cases for this, and I'd love to hear them. For now, this is open source. You can contribute as a developer. You can ask a lot of questions. Uh, we welcome everything. That's it. Yeah, same way as OSM, we have the same OAuth capabilities as OSM, so you would sign up as a user, um, same as if you were to sign up now. Yeah, the render tiles right now is experimental and we're thinking about different uh, use cases. Right now it's connected to the blank slate. So, but I'm, I'm sure that it would be trivial to add different tile layers. Uh, so when you contribute to OSM seed, do I save it? So it's exactly like OSM in that you, once you spin up your own OSM seed and map uh, for your use case, 
you can save all that data and then you can analyze it offline or uh, you know turn off OSMC, reload it if you wanted to. No, it's not gone. You can you save it. It's excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yes. It's your own on your own private infrastructure. Anyone else? I know it's really exciting. <laughs> yeah. That's a good question. Uh, the cool thing about having this type of architecture is that if we wanted to make changes to the data schema or if we wanted to make changes to how we spin up certain components, we can, like I said, we, we decided not to do the raster tiler. That would be too much work and we just skipped ahead to the vector tiler. So uh, we saw that the vector tiler would be easier to plug in. Um, I don't know if there are any other components. I'm not the I'm not the primary maintainer of the project. That's a good question to pose in the repo. Max again. Right now we have Tasking Manager three experimental experimentally in Kubernetes, but uh, yeah, I think that that's what we're going to target. Okay, cool.